you could all make it. Um, hopefully there'll be a few more that come along. Uh, the weather has not been the best tonight. But basically, I am going to be the moderator this evening. I got, I don't know if it was elected or railroaded, but anyway, <laughs> either, either way, uh, I was asked to moderate the meeting tonight. So you're all here to basically is the public forum to discuss the hiring of a new police chief. Uh, I'm going to go over some of the details on it. Basically, this meeting is because the select board felt very strongly that they wanted input from the citizens of the town of Northfield on making this change uh, in the police department and the hiring of the new police chief. So because of them, we're here and I'm here, okay? Um, I, first of all, I want to mention that there are not only is the select board present in here, um, they're kind of observers, but obviously if we have any direct questions for the select board, they're here to answer them. There are members of the screening committee, uh, of which I am one. I'm Skip Donnell, for those that don't know me. I'm Skip Donnell, I'm the fire chief and emergency management director, okay? And there are a couple of other members of the screening committee. I'd like you to just an announce yourselves, if you don't mind, just state who you are and your name and whatnot, so people know who's on the screening committee. Heather Tower. Melissa Gamash, okay. Kate Wilner, I should have I should have seen you right in the front, Kate. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, so we're the members of the sc screening committee, and we met uh, sh a short time ago, and started to put together some of the criteria and the questions that obviously uh, the consultant that the select board has hired are going to ask the applicants. Uh, MRI is the consultant. And if you've got any questions about that, you can address the select board. But basically, they're a consultant that the uh, select board has hired. They're very experienced in what they do, but they need guidance from the select board and the screening committee, as well as you folks here tonight, uh, as to what we are looking for in a new police chief. So, uh, I'm, like I said, I'm the moderator. I am going to set a few ground rules that are going to be very, very common to everybody here. We're basically gonna run this very similar to what we do in our town meeting, okay? If you wanna speak, uh, raise your hand, I'll acknowledge you, and then you can come up to the microphone and give us your opinion as far as where we should go and what we're looking for. Please give your name and your address if you're gonna address the crowd or, or got any questions. Um, we, are, we are gonna set a time limit. I don't know how much time this is gonna take, once you get to the microphone and start to present your ideas as far as where we're going and what we need to do, we're gonna, you're gonna probably cut you off at about the two minute mark. I expected a lot more people here than there are here, so if, if you need to, we can extend that. We'll see how this evening goes, okay, as far as that's concerned. I do wanna make sure that this is in a positive mode, okay? We're looking for, and they're looking for, and the rest of the townspeople are looking for positive input from all the citizens Thank you. as to what they want to see in their new police chief. Uh, we're not here to dwell in the past. We're not here to, to talk about the history, okay? We're here to move forward and have whoever the new police chief is selected to fill the needs that we're looking for, okay? so. If somebody starts to get off on a tangent and is here to, you know, to either file complaints or whatever about how things have gone in the past, that's not what this meeting is about. This meeting is about moving forward and what we want to do to form enough information so the selection can be made that will best fit the town. Okay. Uh, I do want to mention that if there's anybody here that is skeptical as far as speaking, but you still want your views presented, there are cards on the table along with pens. Write it down tonight, please, okay? Put it in the box. You don't have to sign it. Be totally anonymous. But if you want to do a written, uh, written uh, statement, by all means, you can do the written statement as well as, as, uh, as that. If you want to put something into the, to the more anonymous, or to the end of the town hall, 
you could use the mailbox that's at the rear entrance of the town hall, but that has to be done tonight because all this information is going to get correlated and it's going to start to be put together and it's going to go to MRI so that they can form the consensus of what the town of Northfield is looking for in their, uh, their new police chief. Basically, when the uh, screening committee got together, um, we we're looking, we kind of broke down the topics into four topics that we're going to take a look at tonight. The four topics are as follows. The first one, community interaction. Okay, we want your input on what you're looking for from your new police chief as far as community in interaction. The second one is familiarity with the new policing laws that just got passed and the techniques and how that's going to affect training, certification on the use of force as far as police officers. That's going to be a big deal in the upcoming years as far as how your police department is going to interact. Okay? The third one is collaborations both inside and outside the community. We want your input as far as what you expect your police chief to be able to do as far as in town as well as collaborate with those departments around the surround Northfield. And the fourth um, priority is qu the qualities that you want to see in your new police chief. Okay? So we're going to break it down into those four categories. So um, if everybody's ready, uh, we'll start off first of all with the first item, community interaction. Anybody have anything that they'd like to say in response to what they're looking for as far as community interaction with the new chief of the police department. Mr. Goodwin, please come forward. Andrew Goodwin, 129 Gulf Road. So, this kind of blends two of your categories. When you say yeah. community inter interaction, to me it's about approachability. It's about somebody that is humble, you know, a servant leader, somebody that works with the communities, the teenagers in town, the kids in town, feel like they can just go up and talk to them. And he's part of the community. Yeah, yeah. Definitely on now. <laughs> so, and I've seen a lot of police officers, good, bad in the past. I've, my time on the select board in Irving, got to have lots of interactions. So just that, that quality of approachability, caring, and, and working with the town's folks from a community standpoint. Okay. Thanks, Andrew. Anybody, anybody else? Mark Fortier, All right. head of the EMS department. Mark Fortier, not on Station Road. Um, my first question is more of a question than it is a statement. Um, have we identified or done an analysis of what, and it's not a, crit, a critique of the former management of the department or anything else, this is a matter of have we determined whether we're looking for a street officer or an administrative officer, somebody who's spends most of their time in the office doing paperwork and that sort of stuff compared to somebody who spends time on the street interacting with something. Because I think that analysis has to be done before we de can determine what character we're looking for for this position. Mm -hmm. um, the reason I asked the question is because as we continue the conversation into the qualified immunity questions that are happening, the changing in um, paramilitary to maybe community policing, that sort of uh, goals is maybe where we're looking for in a police chief. I think those questions have to be answered. Is, is Are we looking for somebody who can be an administrative officer or are they going to be a street officer? Well, if it's an administrative officer, what I would be looking for is possibly somebody who can be shared potentially amongst other departments or whatever, whether it's Northfield departments or other potential you know, communities, 
if it's a street officer, okay, well, that, that takes a different characteristic of, of somebody than somebody who's administrative. Um, so my question, I guess, to the select board is how we determined whether we're looking to just replace the current, replace the existing, the, the past police chief with somebody new to continue to do the same job, or have we looked at reorganizing what we do in policing? Because there's going to be so many changes coming up, and I think that's in the next segment. But I mean, that to me is an important question we have to get answered first as to what we truly are looking for in the future. Because policing, in my opinion, what it was the last 20 years is not going to be what it is the next 20 years. And I think that we have some different options if depend on how we answer that question. Okay. Uh, I don't know if the select board wants to address that. I can, I can basically give you what the advertising for the position is looking for. Um, if you want, I'll share that with you, and then if the select board wants to chime in, you can do that. The Chief of Police for the Town of Northfield. The Town of Northfield is seeking a progressive, community-orientated police chief to lead this full-time police department with an approximate budget of 450000 consisting of three full-time officers, nine part-time officers, and a part-time administrative assistant. With approximately 3,000 residents, Northfield is a quintessential New England community on the border shared with New Hampshire and Vermont in northwest Massachusetts on the Connecticut River, which divides the town. With easy access to I-91, Northfield is just 46, 46 miles north of Springfield, 94 miles northwest of Boston, and 183 miles from New York City. The town is governed by a five-man select board with an appointed town administrator, a bachelor's degree in criminal justice, police administration, or related field is preferred. At least 10 years progressively responsible law enforcement with at least five years in a supervisory command and administrative position or any equivalent combination of education and experience which demonstrates possession of the required knowledge, skills, and abilities, or any equivalent combination of education and experience is required. Salary range, 105,000 starting salary commensurate with the qualifications with excellent benefits. And obviously Northfield's an equal opportunity employer for additional information, um, and it gives the search contact of Sean Kelly, Director of Services for Municipal Resources, Inc., and that's MRI. That's the company that the town has hired to assist. Um, we haven't actually defined exactly, Mark, as far as, as, far as the, the committee. Um, I think the feeling is that it, he will be a working police chief, uh, who will share administrative with an administrative assistant, but I don't want to speak on behalf of the select board. I'd like to, I'd like to turn that over to the select board. Yes, Mary. Hi, my name is Mary Bowen. Oh, thank you, Alex. Hi, my name is Mary Bowen. Um, I can speak for myself as a select board member in saying that, um, actually just reiterating what Skip just said, that I am personally looking for a police chief that is out in the community as well as managing the um, administration portion of the position along with his other officers. So a police chief that I personally am looking for will have experience in both those. So to me, they go together. Now, jobbing out uh, a police chief to other police um, organizations for admin work only is not something that I see that fits, and I never really thought of it that way, Mark. Um, so I hope that that kind of clarifies what I'm kind of looking for in, in terms of that question. Would you like this? Whoops, hold on a minute. Would you like to add something, Alex? Uh, sure. So we're on the community interaction subject here. Um, police chiefs in this day and age have to be politicians. Um, there's no way around it. Uh, the sensitivity of law enforcement these days requires them to do that. They have to be correct. They have to behave. They have to be professional. And so they have to be out in the public. Um, the, the salary has always been a constant issue in this town, I would say, for not just the police chief, but for other officials as well. And for those that have a more conservative approach to how their town likes to be run, that salary has to be justified, and we justify that salary by making sure that our chief is going to be 
um, present in the community. And um, that doesn't mean they have to be a politician in the community, because that's sort of what we're here for. But you're justifying that big chunk of change by getting out there, even if it's just knocking on a resident's door and introducing yourself, even if it's, you know, going, going to a local spot in town where, where the community has a, a, a sense of culture and belonging and understanding that. And when you understand that and, under, and get into the hearts and minds of, of the residents, you're justifying a strong community policing strategy. And that's what we need to see in our police chief. Okay, any other select board members like to address the question? If just go. You want to go? Go ahead. Ready. I guess this one? You don't hold it down. Oh, okay. Um, Mark, I guess I would turn the question around. It's a small enough town where um, all people end up doing some administrative work. I think that's just the nature. Um, so I guess I would turn the question ar around in that why wouldn't it be both in some capacity? There's some administrative work in most leadership positions. I think the question is how it's distributed. And the other question I would have for you, because really what I want to do tonight is just listen to what people want, is um, what do you think it should be? And when you said shared among other departments, what's that idea? Um, I guess that's, that's it. I, I'm just here to listen, really. So uh, why would it be one or the other, I guess, admin versus on the street? Okay, Heath, did you want to add anything? Yeah. So given what our town currently needs, the, the current size of the town, and what I've seen in other staffing models around the county over the last, like, 20 years, the administrators, the chiefs that work during the day, typically are the only ones on. So they do the administrative portion. They do the house checks. They run radar. They do all the different patrolman-type things mixed in with administrative work. Now, some of them are fortunate enough to have maybe a part-time administrator that works with them. Um, sometimes there's day shift officers that will work with them, but right now our current staffing model in Northfield I think is optimal for what Northfield has. It's, no, it's size, what's going on. Not saying that's not going to change in the future, but I think right now the mix of the administrative with the patrolman's work is the typical standard that you see in this area, and I think given what Northfield is right now, we'd probably look for something like that, someone who has both capabilities and then if things were to shift down the road where we needed to add more officers because the college got so big and all these other demands came on the town then maybe we would have to have somebody who was just strictly a patrolman while the chief was doing so much administrative work because there was piles of book work and they couldn't get out there and run radar which then caused people to speed through town which justifies adding more you know help during the day so but I think for the immediate future we would want to look for both and then obviously if things transition we would change those needs it just be something that we would ad adapt to in the future okay did that address your question Mark so to, an so to answer the question that was asked back to me is I don't have an answer is that my question was has it been looked at has there been an analysis mm -hmm. um, and again I'm not being critical of the former administration or the current administration, I'm just saying is that now is an opportune time for the town to take a step back and reevaluate. And part of the, you know, was the former chief doing 40 hours a week of administrative work and he didn't have time to be out on patrol or was he out on patrol because he only had 10 hours of administrative work? That's the analysis I'm looking to see. Has it been completed yet so that we can determine what is the right fit for this position? So, Mark, just to chime in there, um, we are right at the beginning process of putting, a com putting together all the um, applicants. So with the consulting firm, and if you look on our website, you will see this up there and it will explain in more detail that what we are looking to bring into the position so we have not analyzed that yet this is the beginning process of the hiring okay so so then my response to that would be is that we haven't we have hired an interim police chief 
Right. All right. Right. Now, and I, I applaud you for, for taking the, the initiative to bring the guy in for, internally to do that. And he might be the right guy in the future, but we're putting the cart before the horse if we think that now is the time to have a consulting firm doing applications, bringing these people in if we don't know what it is we're hiring. That analysis to me needs to be done before we think about who the right guy is going to That's be. That's what's happening right now. Okay. We are yeah. in. We are doing that right now. This is the beginning. All right. It's a great point, Mark. What you're saying is is do the analysis, right? And what we're saying is we're so early in the process that this is the feedback that we're hearing. So I appreciate what you said, and I'm glad you actually explained it because it's not an either or. What you're saying is do the analysis of what the current position is doing. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. It's a great point. Thank you. Okay. This is this is what this meeting is all about is sharing sharing information, asking some questions um, and and finding, you know, finding a middle ground here. So Good evening. My name is Steve Stoy, and I want to talk about the Easter Bunny. <laughs> um, I, I want to just kind of register the fact that um, the chief and his son, and later um, the chief and low man on the totem pole in the uh, in the roster, were. The Easter Bunny at the Kiwanis Easter Roll uh, attended by maybe a hundred people, parents, grandparents, and kids. It lasted maybe five minutes. It was a, a, a wild furry, no, no bloodletting, anything like that, but it was really quick and bang and, the, and, and it was done. But the value of those minutes to the police department, I think, was great. And I'm bringing that as, as just one example. The police department is, is visible, and so are the EMTs for the Easter program. And at the um, Great River Challenge Triathlon every fall, the fire department is there, the, the, um, the uh, safety dive team. team, dive team is there. Um, the police department, all these appearances in public are very valuable, I believe. I think, you know, the parents, uh, the, the participants in the race, they all recognize the fact that these uh, departments are there and they're contributing to a community event and they're making it safe and they're making it fun and it also says to them, that he's fun too. No offense. Um, and and I think that's very important for the image of the police department going forward. I think uh, there's plenty of places that we can use them in other capacities. Okay, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Buddy, Brian, Brian Bordner, Ash Bullet Road. Uh, moving forward, as far as the interaction of a police chief with the community, I think the most important aspect is how would that chief respect the rights of the citizens and does the potential chief have a history of protecting the rights of the citizens? Saying history tells you that I'm not advocating for someone who does not have a significant amount of time 
I, I would advocate for someone who has a significant amount of time as a police officer. I'd also advocate for someone who's either had a leadership role, either being a chief or a sergeant, because with experience comes knowledge, comes understanding. I would think that you would want to select someone who has proven that he will stand up for the rights of a citizen even when his officers make a bad arrest. And there are bad arrests. They happen. And if you can find such an individual who has that history, who has that type of community interaction, it would be a good candidate for town of Northfield. To not address what that person's history is, whether they have been in a leadership role and they've called in younger officers when they've made a bad arrest and tried to straighten it out, that's a good sign. You want community relations with someone, they're not constantly going to be backing up their officers when they make a mistake. And officers do make a mistake. Not often, but they do. Okay? To ignore that criteria, to not look into what the history of a potential candidate is, would be a very big injustice to the people, the citizens. And, uh, I think when you go through your process, if you keep that in mind, maybe all of a sudden the second criteria, which is the use of force, wouldn't mean too much. Maybe expense to the town, defending a police department that does something wrong, and then we have to be going to town council and defending the town based upon the actions of that police officer. I think you really want to get someone who has a history of integrity. And that's it. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. We're actually up on the time limit for community interaction. I took up a little, a few minutes when I did the first introduction. So if there's anybody that has anything else that they would like to add, Kate. Yeah, I'm short. Um, <laughs> in terms of community relations and community interaction, you know, I see police officers around town on a regular basis but that's not the same as interacting. And so, yeah, I might see a police officer if I came here for a game or, you know, the various things that have already been mentioned. But I think there should be a more intentional um, setup of opportunities for the community to meet with not just the chief, whoever he or she may be, but with all of the officers uh, from time to time so that there can be conversations beyond just a wave or a hello or maybe something not positive. Um, I think we are missing that, that kind of a quality of interactions with, or I am anyway. Um, that's all. Okay, would anybody else like to speak in regards to community interaction? It kind of dovetails on our third, third subject, but uh, we'll uh, entertain one more speaker. My name is Nancy Billings and I live in the farms at 15 Millers Falls Road. So I have recently come back. Come closer to the oh, mic. Nancy. Sorry, can you hear me? Okay. okay. Go ahead. I've recently come back to the area, and you know, sadly, I just feel that there's an element of I I would call it community policing approachability. You know, a lot of I've considered being on the board to evaluate, but I I really just want you to hear that I feel that. There are people in the community that are view the current department as aloof, as unapproachable. And I'd really like not to complain. I, what I'd really like to see moving forward is to change that, to open 
the doors of communication, I want someone, I would like you to look for someone who is professional in stature. Certainly mm -hmm. leadership is huge, but I want them to be a leader of their team along with a leader within the community. I'm not so caught up on what their day-to-day -day is going to be and whether it's going to be administrative or whether they're going to be in the car or doing a detail. I'm more concerned about, you know, I agree, agree with a lot of things that were said tonight. You know, we do see everyone out on the street doing things, but you know, when I go by, it's, this is a small community. I should be able to wave and get a wave back, and I don't. I see them on their phones, I see them turning away. I feel like it should be, I guess my, I feel like it should be more. And I feel like we should take a look at some of our local communities to see what's working there and to emulate them. You know, have this third party company spend time visiting Berniston, Leverett, other local towns to see how the community members feel about their police team and maybe kind of have a brainstorming session of what works and what doesn't. What hurts me, having lived here my earlier life and coming back, is people that I don't know in the town are not happy <laughs> with what's going on. And I miss the camaraderie. I miss knowing people in the community. I miss the energy of the community. Yes, Northfield is an aging population, but we should be able to have some young energy to, to infuse and excite and motivate. And if we had leadership in the town other than the select board, if we had it in our policing, we'd have a dynamite town again. I'm just not feeling that energy. Okay, thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. Okay, these, are all, these have been all good uh, ideas, good comments. This is the type of input that I know I'm looking for as far as being on the screening committee. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, we'll all, we'll all take some of this, uh, all these ideas and try to formulate in them. I will say that uh, I didn't know who MRI was until I got selected or asked to serve on the screening committee. Uh, they have a tremendous reputation in, try in trying to make a good fit for communities, both large and small. They have an experience level that is, that is um, as far as I'm concerned, I think it's unmatched. But they, again, are looking for what we expect out of our, out of our, uh, out of our new chief. And they will, part of what their job is gonna be is to screen out those who don't fit, okay? And ultimately, the screening committee is going to narrow down that scope so that we can give to the select board what the screening committee's top three candidates are. At that point, then the selectmen obviously take over. They actually can do um, interviews. They had, can actually enter into negotiations. But the info we're getting here tonight is exactly what, exactly what we're looking for. So uh, if we have time later, we'll come back into community interaction or we can, we can kind of dovetail it into item number three, which is collaborations both inside and outside the community. But I'd like to uh, go to item number two, which is familiarity with the new policing law, the techniques, and how that's going to affect training and certification and use of force in our department. So. Um, I don't know if there's anybody here that would like to give an overview of what the new policing criteria is going to be. Uh, I know there's been, uh, it's going to make a substantial change in the uh, ability as far as part-timers versus full-time, what the training criteria is going to, going to be required. Uh, is, uh, that is going to be probably one of the toughest challenges of whoever comes in as a new police chief. So. Um, Gary Sebelia, you got your hand up. You want to just get, kind of give a quick overview on that? For those that don't know Gary, he was a police chief in town here for 16, years, 16 yeah. years, a number of years ago. Okay, Gary. 12. We're going to hold you to the two minutes. How's that? That's good. Okay. Uh, my name is Gary Sebelia, as you mentioned. The new reform in the police laws are that there will be no more part-time officers, and we cannot hire any more part-time officers, the part-time academies have been non-existent at this time. There's also gonna be that most officers will be able to take the Bridge Academy, but if the 
most of the chief of police in Massachusetts want to make sure that um, their officers go to the full-time academy. So even though you have an officer bridge, he'll still be able to work as a part-time officer, but 10 years down the road, 15 down the road, years down the road, the bridge officers will be gone probably. So there's going to be mostly full-time police officers. So we're in Northfield. When I became chief, we only had two, then we had three. And what are we up to, 11 part-time now, 12? And that's about what we had for And we covered 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Officers were on call from 2 o'clock in the morning till 4.30. They didn't get paid. Now they do. We get a stipend. And from 4.30 to 7, and I would come on 7 to 5, and then 4 to 2. But the, uh, the community, the new law with police reform is going to uh, cause towns a lot of financial problems because you're not going to be able to have part-time officers eventually. And the ones that do bridge, they're not going to stay. They could probably go to a department that's not going to send their officers to a full-time academy. So there's, there's going to be a lot of work ahead for that. They haven't even started the bridge program. They don't even know what they're going to do. So there's a lot of things that are happening now that uh, you really are all mostly unexplainable at this time. Gary, when okay. does the part-time um, cutoff start uh, happen where there is no part-time? July 1st. Pardon? July 1st. July 1st. The, the officers, happen. Officer Collins, part-time. He, he's going to bridge himself, but we don't. He would work, be able to work here as a part-time officer. But a lot of police chiefs in the state especially the bigger ones, they want all people, they can take the Bridge Academy, but they will still be considered part-time, but they want them to go to the full-time police academy. That's what most police chiefs are saying, okay. be trained properly. Okay, Gary, I have one question. Yeah. The, the law that we're, we're speaking about, is strict, that's strictly a Massachusetts law? Correct. Okay, Correct. so if, if a chief came from another area or another state, then he makes, he, we have to make sure that he's familiar with what those requirements are going to be well, before he, we go ahead and hire him. He comes from any other state in Massachusetts. Yeah. He came from Connecticut. He came from uh, uh, Vermont. Those are reciprocal states. Okay. You can be, uh, you can take, uh, transfer yourself to, be, to become a full-time police officer. Mm -hmm. It's all up to the Mass Criminal Justice Training Council, and they will look at how many years they were a police officer, what was their full-time training, and they will accept you. Like Dick Taffner was the police chief before me, and he was a New York City police officer for, mm -hmm. for 20 years, and he was 10 years in Northfield. He just was certified. They certified him as a Massachusetts police officer from his academy. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, thank Thanks you. for your input. Mark Fortier. Uh, excuse me? Well, let's speak so everyone can hear, Kate, okay? Okay. Well, Kate again, is asking what changes are going to come down as far as certifications and trainings. Well, every every police that officer quick? that's part not time now will have to go to the Bridge Academy. But again, we don't know when that's going to be because this is all brand new. And the Bridge Academy, I believe, is uh, three weeks of computerized training, one week of firearms, one week of uh, defensive tactics. That's it. And then they'd be bridged to work still continue working here and it go, it's going by alphabetical order so whenever they do start it's going to be like a through f and they have and then they'll go through back for three years this part-time officers can still work for the next three years okay thanks gary yep. mark come on down i'll reset my clock <laughs> Okay. Yep. I'd like to welcome the members of law enforcement to what EMS has been in since the year 2000, mm -hmm. which is certification requirements, licensing requirements. They pull your authorization to practice if you do something wrong. This is all common common for what we ha what we do in EMS. The reason I say that is because law enforcement is about to experience the same problems that we experience in EMS. You're working out the part-time and volunteers into full-time positions. The people who need to do the job in small towns like this, you can't get volunteers to do it because the requirements are just so much. 
the uh, the reduction of the, uh, the immunity that go uh, go away. Why would somebody who lives in your community want to do law enforcement part time and risk losing their house, everything that they own, for doing something where they can carry a gun on a weekend? Um, which brings me to the bigger question, okay. so, to the point, which is, um, I honestly think that we need somebody who can think about the bigger picture. And I started off earlier about the uh, looking at what we're going to be in 20 years from now. Um, the quality of the service, we're going to need full-time people, but you have to have a position to be able to offer them. Are we going to be able to continue to hire full-time people with just Northfield's uh, taxation dollars or do we look at doing something on a bigger scale do we talk to other communities with shared officers and then yes the you may not have a huge savings in money but you think about having the quality of service having that officer that's covering Northfield and Bernardston as an example on the overnight instead of having an on-call person now you're sharing those those resources you have the shared services of both of all those communities I can tell you from an EMS perspective our relationship with the communities around us it's working fantastically for us the problem that we continue to have and we're going to continue to have and by the way we'll be having a conversation here shortly select board um, is the need for more people possibly another full-time person because we just can't get the volunteers to fill the gaps to be consistently on call, uh, available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It just is, just is it's, un, it's un, unattainable with volunteers, especially when you add the requirements that are coming down the road. Okay. Does anybody, do you have anything to add? I see you, uh, Alex. Yeah. So, familiarity with new policing laws, techniques, training, certification, and use of force. What I would like to see and achieve for that is that uh, I would like to see a chief that that's that you know there's no I think there's no oh that's how I interpret it interpretation I think should come down to the courtroom and lawyers and stuff like that that's not I don't think that's a cop's job to really interpret things I think it's their job to know to know their job and to do their job um, and that's through the department's policies and procedures which are set in place for our town if you don't follow those policies and procedures then you're violating department policy you're violating department policy then this town is at risk and we will lose a lot of money that's usually what happens when somebody makes a mistake like that with use of force there's no rewind button there's no it's not a video game when you when you unholster your weapon and someone's filming it it's part of the history of you now it's part of the history of your life and we have to have a chief that understands that Phones are a big controversial issue these days, and the second that the, the play button is hit and you're escalating up the use of force ladder, you can't take it back. It goes in the report, it gets documented, it ends up in court, it, it follows the usual police procedure when it comes to use of force. So we need to have a chief that knows that and will, will follow the rules when it comes to the use of force. Like I just said, it's not an I think. It's not on how I interpret it. When you do it, you got to stand behind it. So we need a chief that's going to understand that. Okay. Thanks, Alex. Just a good one. So when it comes to the new laws, Andrew Goodwin, Gulf Road. <laughs> When it comes to the new laws, I'd ask the select board to look very carefully about what's a funded mandate and a versus an unfunded mandate. Push back on the state, use your town attorney. We, we shouldn't be increasing our costs because the state's imposing new things on us. So look at that very carefully. Okay. Andrew, you said um, we should be looking into the funded versus non-funded? Correct. Right. There are state laws that they cannot have unfunded mandates pushed to the local towns and communities. Thank you. Okay, anything else on the familiarity with the new policing law, the techniques needed, the training, the certification, and what you're looking for in your new chief to impose? 
Keith? Just basically someone who knows this stuff inside and out. I mean, I've been out of this career path for three years now, and I'm completely unfamiliar with a lot of it. Like, I've kind of done some crash courses on it, but it really does ratchet up everything for these towns. The training has to get ratcheted up. The responsibilities on the police chiefs is significant. The misconduct is just one of the biggest ones where if someone behaves poorly, something gets submitted to a commission that follows this police officer for life. Because right now, if you have a member of a police department acts poorly, maybe gets terminated or moves on, you have to kind of dig deep to find why they left that department. And you don't often find that. There's a lot of liability on an employer for releasing something that might preclude someone from a job down the road. So this, a lot of the part of this reform is that if someone does act poorly, it's going to follow them and it's gonna be up to the chief to stay on top of all that information, on top of everything else, all these other trainings, you know, the, the strict banning of racial profiling, a lot of body camera stuff that comes into play. Um, so not only does this person need to know the ins and outs of this complete reform law, but they need to know how to administer it as well. So someone who's had the experience in a department that's already done it is going to be key. And just back to the conversation of where we talked about someone from maybe out of state, maybe they could have read about the law, they could have been educated about it, but would they have seen it administered, played out since its inception? Would they have actually seen it put into play? So I'd like personally to see someone who has experience, they witnessed it happen, and they, want, they know how to administer that when they come to Northfield because it's a, it's a huge shift. It's a different, definite change from the way that people have done things for many years. If they're 20, 30 years experience, it's a complete ball, different ball game now. Okay, thank you, Heath. Anybody else in the new policing law? If there's no other comments, then we'll move on to, to uh, discuss collaborations both in and outside the community. Uh, what do you folks want to see from your leader of the police department as far as collaborating not only in town, we've covered a little bit of that when we talked about community policing, but also the collaborations that we expect him to either form or continue with uh, outside the community. I'd like to hear some input from the from the folks. Mark. As you can tell, I have a lot of opinions. <laughs> um, as somebody who has worked closely for the last almost 30 years with our public safety officials in town here, police chiefs, fire chiefs, other towns. When there is a police event in town, we get cruisers from everywhere. No doubt about that. But the one thing that I think has been lacking for the last few years and we definitely need to get, needs to be fixed with the next police chief is the collaboration with these other communities, especially going back to the last topic of more full-time officers, less part-time officers, there's gonna be a smaller pool of resources to be working from here, is that the relationships with all of the towns around us need to be corrected and fixed where all of them can work successfully in each other's towns. Uh, there definitely is a divide uh, with some of the communities around us, and that has got to end. Uh, we need to have the collaboration with all of the towns, not just certain individuals that we may like better than others. Okay. Point taken. Yes. Joan Stoya, another short person. <laughs> Um, I'm sure that Skip and Mark um, would are be looking for a person who will be a team player with them. I would I would feel better if I knew, as a citizen, that the those three public safety officials really were simpatico. So I would I would endorse you all looking for people that you are comfortable with working with. And just an observation. When we go to town meeting and we see whether it's fire, whether it's police, whether it's EMS, 
um, dollar items coming before the town for a vote, I'd like to know that those expenditures for that department have been at least run by the other two departments for cost sharing, for duplication, for something uh, that makes sure that that purchase is not putting one department way out in front or in a, in a non-compatible technology from the other two. So just uh, I, collaboration in purchasing and upgrading of equipment I think would be important. And my last point is I'd like to hear more she's in the discussion <laughs> and yes. not just he's. Yes. Thank you. So noted, so noted, Joan. Um, I will say that, that, that as the fire chief, which I've been for a number of years, uh, collaboration between departments is, is, it is key in a small community. You can accomplish so much by working hand in hand and jointly together. Um, I mean, when we just had the flooding that we had, I mean, there was a collaboration between uh, fire, between emergency management, between police, it's between highway, and uh, that, that you can get so much accomplished when you work together. And and I'm going to be looking. Obviously, that's one of my one of my issues as a as an emergency services provider. And I'm going to be looking to make sure that we are looking for somebody that has that background, has that history, because that's what makes a small town work. Um, so it, it, your, your, your points are, are well taken, Joan. And ultimately, this comes down to the select board, but uh, there's going to be a lot that is weighed in on it. Um, there's also someone from EMS that's on the, on the committee as well, so I'm sure those, those things are going to be taken a look at. But that's what makes Northfield work. That's what keeps Northfield safe. Okay. Anything else on collaborations inside and outside? Brian. <coughs> Brian Bordner, Ashwillet Road again. Uh, I'd like to say that, you know, town, your Second Amendment rights, my Second Amendment rights, the right of the citizen, very important to me and for those of you who know obviously I have a lot of vested interest into it and the town of Norfield has been great um, I have no complaints the town of Norfield has been excellent when it comes to dealing with people and servicing them for their Second Amendment rights and that's their job outside of that job I'd like to see someone who's welcoming to People who may be hesitant want to get training for their Second Amendment rights. I go to a lot of parties where I listen to a lot of women say, you know, really, I really would like to, you know, be part of something that gets me my right to carry and, you know, and then when they do take, you know, training, they find out that it wasn't really what they thought it was and it's very empowering and I'd like to see someone who's welcoming to that uh, someone who goes maybe just a little bit beyond the obligation of their job is more of an outreach to welcome people to get certified to get knowledge to get understanding and once again if our citizens had that it'd be a lot less bad instances I think maybe not Northfield not a lot less but maybe a few I don't know Northfield's a pretty quiet town. Thank you. All right, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Mr. Goodwin, you had something to add? A lot of notes there, huh? Yeah, I would just add that when you're talking to the candidates, interviewing the candidates, if they've been in a leadership role, ask them what programs or things they've put in place to bring communities together, to work with other towns. If they're nearing that leadership role and they're a candidate, what things would they put in place? How would they do that? Actually have that dialogue with them and understand, you know, what, what their, what, what you feel their qualifications are after you've had that conversation. Okay. Do you have any specifics that you're, so you're thinking of? Just if, to give if I was coming in as, which obviously I'm not qualified, yep. but if I was coming in as police chief, what would I do to lead other police chiefs, other departments getting together 
and what kinds of forums would I put together to listen to other towns, to listen to what works well in the other towns. I think to the other lady's point about learning from other towns, if you're new to the area, you could be a candidate that's coming in from a city. What's it like to be in a town? How are you going to learn from the other towns and become the small town police chief versus a big city police chief? Okay. Thank you. Hi again, sorry. I support exactly what this other gentleman said mm -hmm. prior to me. And if you looked and compared local governing as mm -hmm. a business, as, as any other business operates, like a large business, for example, where leaders, business leaders get together, they have forums. I'm not sure if that type of forum exists currently. I know that forums exist within communities, uh, with their chiefs, with their staff and so forth, but what about pursuing something along those lines where the business leaders are, share, are sharing best business practices and evolving from there? I think you need an innovative thinker and I'm a little um, concerned about an out-of-state person, personally, because Northfield has just, as I recall, just some such unique, wonderful, nostalgic feelings that I don't feel anymore for them. I think it needs to be someone who is tuned into the people of the community and, and kind of rejuvenate that and bring back that fun, loving leadership capacity. And ultimately, you know, fun and safe okay okay Gary there, there is a uh, community uh, for the police chiefs in Franklin County Franklin County has a police chief association I was president for uh, 18 years six, 16 years and uh, that we meet monthly from September to June, and then July and August we don't meet. So there is a there is a community presence with uh, a police chief. Regarding the, 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 we have to give gun permits, and Massachusetts police chiefs authorize gun permits. And we they come into our station, we do everything that the Massachusetts law requires us to possess a firearm. And we, they do do to go to classes before they get that firearms. So we have the strictest firearm laws in the country, am I right? And we have the best fire alarms, firearms restrictions in this country. And that's why police chiefs do the gun permits, because the police chief knows everybody in that town. The Massachusetts State Police, 50, 20 years ago, wanted to take over gun permits, and we fought them on that, because we know our people. We know who they are. This guy may never be arrested, but we know he's crazy, so, and we have it documented. So we know who to give gun permits to, and we have we are probably one of the best countries, countries, best state in the United States that have the best gun laws. And uh, it's all right. Okay. Thank you, Gary. <clears throat> Anybody else? Oh. Yeah. Alex. I just want to speak for a second on uh, collaborations for our next police chief. So uh, what I've found is that a human nature says that uh, when you don't know something, when you don't see something, you're often weary, skeptical, perhaps untrustworthy of uh, the opposite party. When I first came to Northfield, one of the, one of the things I used to love seeing was um, at the end of the night, all the cops would hang out at MIMS. You'd have Irving there, State Police, Bernardston, Northfield, and I don't know why they don't do it anymore. Uh, it's not, that's not what this is about, but symbolically what that showed was that at the end of a shift, at the end of a watch, all the officers could get together and talk for a few minutes and communicate. And I used to go in there all the time just to watch that and listen to them and get to know them. And uh, to see them all in that type of a spirited mindset, I think shows good leadership in a police chief, one that will allow that and endorse that type of communication between departments. Um, you know, power and leadership comes from the top, and that's not, that's not a that's a given. And we have to get our leaders at the top to trust each other and to respect each other. And when we do those types of things, I think we'll we might be able to start seeing 
maybe an officer from each department together having a conversation and forgetting about the world for a second because we need that sometimes and I'm hoping our next chief will understand that we need that in our departments. That's all. Okay, Alex. Anything else from the general public? If not, I just I'd just like to make a couple of comments as a citizen, not as far as a steering committee, but as your fire chief. Um, what Gary said is is true to a certain extent. I also have uh, meetings I go to once a month, Franklin County Fire Chiefs meetings, and then you can do the Western Mass Fire Chiefs and and Mass Fire Chiefs Council. But the bottom line is is even when we have those meetings we're generally discussing an overview of what either regulations are affecting us or or a lot of other things and I am looking forward to doing a more local collaboration uh, with our neighboring police departments and those chiefs and those those officers as well as a collaboration between the emergency services uh, it's just getting down and sitting at a round table and, and throwing out, okay, what's going on? How can we both address this? How can we all make it a little bit better? I think I'm looking for that type of collaboration um, as well. So um, it goes beyond just the monthly meeting because that's where you deal with business. Um, we're talking about building relationships and, and, and having a better collaboration. Anything else on this subject? Okay, please step up. Happening, thank you. Yep. Um, but it seems like it would make sense for a chief and maybe others in the department to have a working relationship with some of the social service agencies that are available, particularly mental health, substance abuse, domestic violence, um, et cetera. And as I said, I don't know that that's not already happening, but it seems like that would be useful. Okay, thank you, Kate. Anything else in regards to collaborations? The, yes. I think this is more a reflection of what I'm hearing from people is it sounds as if whatever is going on or not going on is not necessarily visible to the people of the town. So for example, communication with other departments. Um, visibility, it sounds like, is another critical um, quality. This might be a good segue into the next one. But in terms of collaboration, one of the takeaways that I'm getting from folks is probably more structure, more visibility in terms of the interaction between the police chief and the community. And perhaps the select board can help with that also in bringing in the police chief on a more regular basis to just chat about what's going on, particularly with the new regulations and certifications so we can all stay up to speed. Um, anyway, I just wanted to share reflect back what I'm hearing, which on, on a few different points under a few different topics, it seems like we should do a little bit more with respect to structured communication. For example, perhaps having another forum like this once somebody is hired to just chat and exchange information as we're doing tonight. We're doing this because we're hiring somebody, but perhaps we should do this going forward when somebody is hired so things can be aired and questions can be asked and people can stay abreast of these new regulations that will affect the town, will affect all small towns, especially in Massachusetts. The cost, the risk, the training, the, the points that Mark brought up about certification affects hiring. Um, hiring affects dollars, dollars affect budget. It's all connected in what we see at town meetings. So those are my opinions as well as my takeaway from what I'm hearing. Thanks. Okay. Anything else? Okay, Mark, real quick. <laughs> okay. Why don't you sit in the front row? <laughs> <laughs> I should. I get my steps in. And told. <laughs> so again, I, I have to echo what Skip says. 
is about the collaboration. I would definitely be looking for a police uh, police chief that we can work with um, co uh, collaboratively, be able to talk about what's going on, have discussions, and be able to work uh, cohesively. Um, there was a time, and I'm not going to dwell on the past, but there was a time where officers would stop at the EMS station, come in, joke with us, have a good time. We talk about what's going on. We there was this collaboration that was going on, and then it sort of ended. I can tell you that since July, things have been getting better. Thank you, um, and I and I don't want to go back to what we had before, where there was a complete division between EMS and fire and police and whatever I'm just saying is that there was a division where you couldn't have a conversation because people wouldn't stop long enough to have a conversation things are better now and I want to make sure that we continue to have that going forward where if we're outside doing a truck check if the if the police officers want to stop by and wash their cruiser while they're there have at it come down have a, com a cup of coffee with us whatever it's an open door and I'm making that offer to you Alex all right it's an open door. Please come down and visit us. Oop, careful. <laughs> we'll call your compadres. <laughs> Anything else in regards to collaborations both in and outside the community? I'll say one, I'll say one quick thing on it. Just to kind of go along with what you just said and what Alex said a few minutes ago about all the police cars that used to line up at MIMS late at night. I remember when I started out years ago, that was the thing that was the place to go at the end of the night and that really faded away and as someone who worked outside the community i i kind of did watch the relationships fray and then when i worked for this community i saw it from the inside and i saw it frayed from the inside as well so that's a huge thing it's probably one of the biggest focal points i want to see just because it does affect the public safety for this town if we don't have good working relationships with other nearby towns you know if somebody hears something going on in Northfield or at least in my day when they did you'd hear something serious going on you'd already start going that way whether you were called or not so that when you were called you were close by and I know that sometimes that hasn't happened because of the frayed relationships recently so that's directly affecting the public safety for us if an officer is tied up if they get compromised and people aren't really willing to come here to help or they're not immediately showing that camaraderie to come and help Northfield out that's a big concern of mine and I just I saw such great relationships years ago and it was the complete polar opposite when I left three years ago so that's just something I really I'm gonna hammer on the person who we bring on the people who we interview that that's one of the biggest things I'd like to see healed within the town is to see the interdepartmental relationships with all bordering towns to be really solidified Okay. All right. I think that that ties up collaborations inside and outside. Uh, I think there's obviously there's room for improvement. So whoever our new selected, our new police chief, I mean that's going to be one of the responsibilities that's going to be laid out for him for him or her to work on. Okay. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be a little bit it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. There's no question about it. It takes an effort to do that. Um, I can speak on behalf of the fire department. We we operate more as a team than the police the police departments do. Police departments have to rely on themselves and their own reactions and whatnot. Generally, with the fire department, we always approach things as a team, uh, and we collaborate and work in unison with all of our neighbors, and that's what makes the fire protection in rural communities work. And I think especially with the new, possibly with the new regulations, that's going to be even more imperative that, that those collaborations are rebuilt. So uh, I like hearing what I'm hearing from you folks, and uh, it's not on deaf ears by any means. So let's move on to the, the, the last, uh, the last uh, topic, and that's qualities in the new chief. I think we've touched base on a few of those, but what qualities would you like to see in your new police chief? Mr. Goodwin. Respect, somebody that respects us, that we can also respect humility, servant leadership. 
those, those that last word that I just said of any of the leadership trainings I've had in my career, servant leadership. Somebody that is here to serve, not somebody that's here to be the boss. Yes. Okay. Anyone else looking for specific qualities in the new hire, Mrs. Stoya? Um, for those of uh, you who travel past the town hall on Sunday afternoons at 4 o'clock, you know that a group of us stand out for Black Lives Matter and related activities as well. So obviously, it's, uh, it, speaking personally, I think for my family, that sensitivity to uh, other cultures, other races, we are a white community. We're hoping it doesn't stay that way 100% in the future. We hope that we see more diversity in the neighborhoods. But until then, it's going to be incumbent upon the new chief, as you say, leadership. Uh, the tenor of the department comes from the top. So we're going to be looking for someone who is sensitive to other uh, cultures and who insists in, in the uh, in the, in the force uh, and provides training, and I'm sure the state has all this in mind, but uh, to keep that, that um, top of mind uh, for, for that. And I just wanted to relay an anecdote. Uh, on the Historical Commission, we had uh, a Narragansett woman and a Wampanoag woman come to the pavilion out behind Town Hall and do a cooking demonstration, Native American cooking techniques. And uh, one of their husbands was in the car with the baby while the mom was doing the workshop. And it was the end of shift, and two officers pulled in uh, to the parking lot. And one of them came over, and it, he was, the, uh, I can't remember, was the older gentleman or the younger, but he came over and wanted to know, what's this all about? Isn't this interesting? Who are, you know, who are, these are very different looking folks from the average North Fielder. And uh, he just came over in the spirit of curiosity and kindness. And I just gave him such high marks for, he could just have gotten in his car and gone home, but he didn't. And that's the kind of leadership that comes down through the department. The freedom to be curious, the freedom to be generous of spirit and I'll be looking for that. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Mark, come on down. <laughs> so qualities I'm thinking of. Um, so society today is not what it was a year ago. It's not the same society it was 20 years ago. Definitely not what it was 20 years ago. And I sort of have to echo sort of what Joan is saying, is that our police department needs to sort of change with the times in that what was good 20 years ago is not the best tactic going forward. So I'm looking for somebody who understands the difference. And it always has to be a certain level of the paramilitary portion of policing. I, I understand that. But there also has to be the humility piece of it that also goes in there, which I think has been absent in the mindset of law enforcement for a while but i definitely think that now is the time that we have to find somebody who has that ability to be able to put the change from paramilitary to community policing if they don't understand community policing it's not going to work yeah. okay i just want to remind everybody at this point i'll have you come down brian I just want to remind everybody at this point if you have got other ideas that you either are reluctant to share with us tonight or you're, you're, you're unlike me, this uh, uncomfortable speaking before a crowd, we do have cards, pens. You know, please jot your thoughts down. They are important to us. Put them in the box. And if you feel reluctant to do that, you want to drop something in the mailbox behind the town hall, it has to be done tonight. Uh, just, a, just a quick reminder. Brian, come on down.
qualification and experience. Rest is up to you. Yes, come, come forward. My name is Jenny Tufts and I live on Bennett Brook Road. I didn't used to think I was afraid to speak in public. Northfield has changed me <laughs> in a lot of ways. And I guess the word that I haven't heard here tonight, and there have been great comments, approachability is certainly one of the things I'm after. I have found this town to be very intimidating. And intimidation is not something that comes really naturally to me. <laughs> but since I got here and I was looking forward to town meetings and uh, I have found this town intimidating. Um, I have had really good interactions with our police department over the years. Really fun and good interactions. So I preface this with by saying that. Um, but I'm stuck in the 50s. I'm stuck with not the Easter Bunny, but Andy Griffith and Barney Fife. And my grandson is watching those shows today, uh, these days, and they still speak to me. It's like, why isn't Northfield looking for somebody with a good sense of humor, with, you know, I know the world has changed. And I know that the police have tremendous challenges and they are putting their lives at risk. Um, and I don't know how to bring these two things together. It's how, as I thank you for saying, let's not be military, let's not be paramilitary while being safe. And I don't want the police department to feel unsafe either. But I'm, I'm looking for, for less intimidating presence and a sense of, hu sense of humor and kindness. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Is there anyone else like to speak in regards to the qualities we're looking in a, for our new police chief? Joan? I just want to compete with Mark. Um, <laughs> just to follow, just to follow up to what I said before, with the with our standout for Black Lives Matter. If the person does all the things that have come out tonight and is personable and approachable and shows up and brings a new junior officer and makes them be the Easter Bunny, and does all those good things. They will know us individually, and they will. One of the concerns we've had standing out on Sundays is as they come in from their shifts, do they know that we're not critiquing them? This is not, this are standing out and advocating for a political position or a social position is not necessarily a critique of the people in your community. So we are hoping that someone might stop and say, how are you guys doing today? And, and be comfortable with that and not worry that our sign is a critique of them. And uh, so I, th I think that's important. It's knowing, knowing us as much as possible as individuals. And I also wanted to say that our interactions with the police department at Centennial House have been wonderful, as they have with EMS and fire department and water department and everybody else. Uh, but we're somewhat unique as citizens because we're kind of sort of at risk. When I told the police chief at UMass where I worked that I was going to open a bed and breakfast in Belchertown, he said, are you crazy? Do you know who's out there? Um, and so we've got to have a wonderful uh, experience 
in a close relationship with the police department. The police department has to come in and we review chapter 190 with them about the behaviors that are unacceptable in hospitality guests, things of that nature. So it's real important to us that we get to know the chief and the chief knows us. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Any other comments in regards to the qualities we're looking for in, in the new police chief? Alex. Okay. So I identified a few qualities that I would like to see in our next police chief, and that's community, consistency, and competency. Now, I'll just go on a little bit of what I mean by each of those. We need a police chief that's not going to be a local strongman, but a goodwill ambassador. I want that to sink in for a second. A goodwill ambassador. That's a chief that represents and stands for a positive community atmosphere, can make the public laugh, makes out-of-towners and residents feel welcomed and not feel like they are living in fear. Now, when you go over the bridge on Route 10 or when you're coming into Northfield and you pass the Welcome to Northfield sign, you should feel a sense of relief when you come into a community, a sense of, I'm proud to be in this town. That's something that we need in a police chief. We need that quality of community. Now, for consistency, to be consistent in the laws and practices of policing, you need to be fair and firm. There's no, there's no get out of jail free cards for people, not in this day and age of policing. And, you know, if the chief knows somebody who, who they've been friends with for 30 years, that what we all have heard of in small town life, political culture, good old boy network, and that person is caught drinking and driving or something like that, they deserve the same level of consistency and practice than somebody who has never been to Northfield before. And we need that type of consistency in our next police chief. Competency. Professionalism with methods, administratively, and in the field. If you're not competent in the methods, or not staying with uh, the methods in current policing, then this probably isn't the field for you, and you have to evolve with the field. So you have to be competent with that. And, and lastly, just something I didn't, I'm thinking of right here, accountability. Accountability is a big word in policing today, and I would like to see that quality in our next police chief. Holding everybody accountable to the same standard, whether it's the rich out-of-stater in the BMW on the weekends, or somebody who has the nice house on Main Street, or somebody who, you know, doesn't have the nice house on Main Street or wherever else. They're to be held to the same standards, same accountability standards, and to be treated with the utmost respect. And remember that word, goodwill ambassador, not a local strongman. Thank you. Okay. Anything else from anybody? Yes, Mr. Bowen. Tim Bowen, 43 Burnham Road. Uh, Alex, top notch. It's exactly, I couldn't say it any better. I was trying to put it together. Perfect. Um, one thing that I think while you guys interview these people is to vet them, obviously, because if somebody's looking for a job, they lost a job. So I, I would be... Um, investigative in the sense of where they came and why they're looking for a job. Very good. Thank you. Anybody else would like to speak? I just wanted to ask a question for those who have businesses. Is there anything else that you want to share that's important to you as a business owner? So Joan, you had mentioned Chapter 190 that there's some specific things your business um, that you need the the chief to be aware of and to be cognizant of so I guess I would ask anyone else who has business is there anything since I don't own a business have never run a business um, is there anything in particular that you want us to be or, or the screening committee to be aware of with respect to business in town Anybody like to speak on behalf 
or give some insight to the board? I think some things have been touched on, obviously. Brian. What was that? Not to be afraid to come to us for business owners. Be free to come to us. Oh. Have the police have the police department come and visit the businesses, talk to them, okay. interact with them. Know who we are, know what we have, know how to protect what we have. Mm -hmm. nice. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. This is gonna be the last call for anybody that wants to speak up or say anything. Uh, first of all, I'd like to commend everybody. Um, this was the intent of this was to try to gather information, get the citizens' input on what we should be looking at for a police chief. I think we had a, probably have a good idea, but it's going to be a daunting task. The problem with hiring anybody um, is it's tough to get the good information that you need to get on an employee. Anybody that's in business and has employees, there's only certain information that you can divulge and not get into Dutch or not get into trouble. So trying to get the information as best and as accurate as we can is going to be a little bit of a daunting task. Uh, I'm not saying it's not impossible. But the bottom line is, is whoever the candidates are, when we whittle the list down, are going to know from the, from the screening committee and are definitely going to know from the select board what we expect and what you folks expect from our new police chief. So I want to first of all say thank you for coming out on a miserable night, okay, to share your thoughts, your ideas, because this is the time if we think we need to make some changes or go in a different direction, this is the time that we have to make those changes. So I commend you for coming out, sharing your information uh, as far as that's concerned. Uh, if, if you have any other questions or whatever, I just want to go down the list of people that are on, this, uh, that are on the screening committee. Um, Heath Cummings, selectman. Mary Bowen, select person. Um, EMS deputy chief is um, Cameron Kennedy. Heather Tower is a, res is a resident at large. Kate Wilner, another resident at large. And then we have Melissa Gamash, who is a resident but also has a little bit of background in, in uh, law enforcement. So obviously we are public. We want information. We have a fairly strict time frame of what we have to do and how we have to get this accomplished. But the bottom line is, is tonight was a very good start at what we do. Yes, Nancy. I can't hear you. What is the time frame? What is the timing? Do you want me to run? Andrea? Uh, estimates. It's all estimated. Um, I have to get the results from tonight and everything else to uh, MRI tomorrow. Um, and then there will be scoring of the first cut um, by the MRI based on the criteria that you've presented and have been listed in the community profile, which is online, plus the ad. Um, there's actually then an essay that will be distributed at that point. And uh, the essays are due back and scored somewhere around September 17th, so there'll be a week or so for an essay. Uh, between September 20th and October 1st, there's a preliminary background work that's done, and there's initial interviews that the consultant does on the phone just to get a sense of the person's ability to communicate, think on their feet, um, and do those sorts of things with the uh, candidates that they have done. Now, through this whole process, there's elimination. So um, they're not out to eliminate people to get to a certain number they're out to eliminate on criteria if they don't meet the first round of criteria based on all the things that have come out tonight then they would be dropped then they were going to do an essay and there's a rubric for the essay and based on that there might be candidates who may or may not move forward the interviews would give them additional screening somewhere around October 7th there's going to be what they call an assessment center so a handful of candidates or not a handful a group of candidates will be invited to go through assessment which is on the ground like field questions and um, actual activities to assess their ability to to do the things and that will all be worked out there'll be several things that will be chosen probably through the select board and or the screening committee um, is what they'd like to see of those blocks in the assessment center so that's october 7th 
Um, and then between October 15th and uh, 11th and 15th, working with the uh, screening committee and the select board, they'll, begin, they'll be doing interview questions for both the screening process and the hiring process, sorting out which set of questions will go in each part of the process. Um, the, um, the, uh, uh, then, the, then the screening committee, uh, about the week of, uh, between the 18th and the 29th, will have their interviews um, based on the set of questions that have been developed. They will then recommend the um, finalists to the select board for interview. It could be two, three, four. It all depends on how many get through this process and the, and the board, screening committee wishes to put forward. Uh, November 1st through the 12th, depending on timing, will be the final select board interviews where they will do a ranking and selection. And then there will be much more intensive background checks done on the final uh, top candidates, much like you're talking about Skip. And the reason to use the consultants is, is they really know the field. They know where these players are. They've seen them probably circulating around and they can help with any particular um, information that we would like to know about people all through this process. And then somewhere around November, end of November, the select board will uh, decide to make an offer and they have to actually enter into contract negotiations. So we won't see somebody till the end of November, maybe the beginning of December. Yeah, we can hear you, uh, Nancy. These are all criteria because you want to choose people from a variety of things. You want to see how, they're, uh, how they communicate written and oral. You want, to, you want to understand that because that's a critical. You want to see how they think on their feet in an assessment center when given a problem. I mean, we all pointed out that we want to make sure that if they're confronted with the situations that, you know, Alex was saying that they know the, that they play by the rules, they know the policies, they learn to react that way. The only way to, to screen these people to make sure that they fit all these criteria, plus many of the things you've said tonight, is to actually present them with those things, whether it's oral or written or physical. Yeah, it's hard for everyone to hear you. It's yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's. N okay, hit, Gary, if you want to speak, yeah, please come they, to the they microphone. They do anticipate that you'll probably get um, candidates from somewhere in the nature of a dozen states. Um, and, and there's, a, there's a good reason to, to be very thorough. Very this, is, this is a very important position. They have a tremendous amount of responsibility. And the community, as you all see and say, are relying heavily on them. Um, and so it's very important um, that they be chosen through a well-crafted, thought-out, and very thorough process. I mean, I think that's why the board decided to go with a consultant. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mark, speak. Also, you have to remember you're going to enter into a contract. This is a contracted position, so it's really not a three-year contract you want to enter into lightly. Um, it's very, it can be very cost-effective, uh, cost-prohibitive um, to, to be um, having to buy someone out. It can really hurt the town financially to pick the wrong person. I mean, practically as well as financially, to look at the whole picture. Okay, Alex? Just really quickly, if we do this process right and we spend the time that is required on it, we are setting the standard going forward for what this town needs to do for this type of position for the next 15 to 20 years. We do it right here, we're setting a great example for the next generations of this town. Well said. Okay, again, cards on the table. If you'd like to write anything down and pass it on, that's the, tonight is the night. Uh, I want to thank everyone for showing up. I wanted to thank those that uh, were willing to speak up. Um, so the bottom line is, is, is thank you for what you're doing 
for us, okay, so the town. So uh, at this point, I'm going to close the meeting. I'm going to retire as a moderator. <laughs> <laughs> well done, okay? Skip. And hope, uh, hope everybody had a good, good, good interaction tonight because that's what we're looking for. Thank you, everybody.